What's up, guys? Michael Stahl here, and today we're going to be doing another animated story. So I've not done this in a while, but this girl cannot get scared. So it's, it takes me a while to find some of these stories, but I don't know if this is going to be the last one. I do a lot of these, but let's get started. I had to turn up the volume for this, because when I started recording this, like there was another video I recorded before it. I couldn't, we couldn't hear it, so let's, hopefully this changes it. You know how scared you get when you are all alone in your room and you hear something go bump in the night? Or when you are about to bungee jump right at the edge of a cliff? Or maybe even that sick feeling at the pit of your stomach before a big exam? I bet you have these kinds of fears many times in your life. Well, the thing is, I have never felt fear at all. Not once. Alright, so obviously I felt a little bit of fear, but... Movies, like movies and fake stuff like on television can't really scare me. Mostly heights do. That's why I don't like going on airplanes. But anyway, let's look. Let's talk about hers. Of my life. Not when I was a baby, not when I was a toddler, and certainly not as a kid or teenager. My name is Krista, and believe it or not, I was born without the ability to experience fear. Sounds insane, right? You're damned right it does. My mom usually tells me about when I was a little baby. Have you guys ever noticed that these characters, their lips don't match the words? And also, my next time I'm thinking about doing this one. Back then, Krista, you never ever cried. I thought I had the quietest baby in the world. But the moment you began calling, I couldn't let you alone for one second. You would dare do things no other child your age would. But before we move on, like this video, hit that subscribe button. And activate you listen to her, bell. subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell. Years longer, and like the video. I never called for her, never shied away from a big dog, tried to climb on every surface I could. I would try to drink shiny liquids. And of course, those came from the cleaning cabinet. Imagine how many times my mom had to rush behind me, stopping me from hurting myself. Now don't think that I never got hurt. I harmed myself plenty of times, believe me. And it hurt like hell. Fear and pain have nothing to do with one another. The thing is... So on my other animated story, here, it's this one right here. On one of my other animated stories, we did a video about this guy who's unable to feel pain at all. Like, not even soreness. So this girl is actually the complete opposite, where she cannot feel, get scared. Just similar to the, he, that guy can't feel pain in my one of my other animated stories. I never connect those two things together until it's way too late. My parents, of course, took me to see lots of doctors and specialists. They run so many tests on me, trying to figure out what the hell is wrong with me. They'd hook me up to these machines and play pictures and movies for me and measure my brain's reaction to it all. Apparently, as the doctors explained to my parents, the part of my brain that experienced fear simply wasn't active. Was Krista dropped on her head as a baby? One doctor asked. And this got my mom feeling awful about her parenting. She hadn't, but it got her thinking. What if she had done something to stun that part of my brain? What if it was her fault after all? She began crying, and I felt awful about it. I got super mad at the doctor and told him off. So you can imagine that we had to leave that hospital pretty soon. It was... <sighs> okay. So... So obviously this girl is not able to feel, she can feel pain, yes, but that little portion of her that makes her get scared was somehow inactive. Wonder why the parents actually never thought it would be, a, wonder why her parents never took her to the hospital as soon as that happened. Just like by Siri. Hey Siri, how are you? Like she's unable to talk to me, but for some reason she could, yeah. So, so, well, my series doing like she's unable to talk to me right now, but that's similar to this girl who is unable to get scared, and also a little bit similar to that guy who can't feel pain. Anyway, guys, let's continue on with the video. Wasn't a nice day, but I don't regret standing up to that doctor for my mom. My parents, both my mother and father, were amazing toward me, and they were so patient, they didn't deserve to be pointed out as irresponsible or anything of the sort. I was just different. That was it. We never did discover why that part of my brain never worked. And when my parents tried to find out if there was a surgery that could fix me, the answer was almost always no. 
Some doctors did theorize it was possible, but the risks would be too high, and I could end up with long-term damage. It simply wasn't worth the risk. I hate watching scary movies, believe me. It's so annoying. I sit there, bored to death, while other people scream and squirm and cover their eyes. I just sigh and get super bored. The monsters are never scary to me, and the killers seem so foolish. I don't enjoy scary stories around the bonfires either, so I wasn't into camping with other kids. Do you know what else I never got to enjoy? Roller coasters or any other activity that produces adrenaline for the sake of fun. Nothing happens to me there. I just sit and get super bored of hearing people scream and flinch. It's super annoying, and people wonder what is going on with me. All right, guys. In case you skipped all the way to this portion. So, obviously this girl is not able to feel pain. We all know that. That's what the purpose of this video is about. So, all this scary stuff actually bores her to death. Like, she falls asleep because she's so bored of it. Because she's um, she's not concerned why other people are going like, ah! Like, some other way I do it on Fortnite. Like, when somebody snipes me and I lose almost all my health. When, usually when I do that... I get like really scared and I build a fort and jump pad my way out. But this girl, obviously, she, I don't even know if this girl even plays Fortnite. Unlike Snipe Wolf and I who play it. And though I, even though I play more than Snipe Wolf now, which Snipe Wolf doesn't really play much anymore, she plays Overwatch. <laughs> Overwatch is not popular no more. But I might get onto it on my channel if it becomes popular again. Anyway, let's get started. If I had a penny for every time I heard someone ask, what the hell is wrong with you? I'd have a fortune. It was almost inevitable I began hanging out with the daredevil. Alright, so it's this is a reference to this is a reference to the Victoria Sam take a hint. If I had a dime for every what well, if I had a dime for every name that you just dropped, you'd be here and I'd be on a yacht or something like that. If I had time for it's similar to that. For every dime, I tend for every name that you just dropped. Yeah, something like, kind of like that. It's, it's a quote from Victorious, Take a Hint. I'm not going to sing the whole song or put the music on here due to copyright. For devil crowds, when I started going to high school, I think that I was trying to finally get that thrill I had never experienced before. They pushed me to try crazier and crazier stunts. And the danger levels kept raising every single time. My mom would freak out so badly. She begged me not to do it anymore at first. Then she scolded me. Then she grounded me. God, she tried everything, the poor woman. Krista, honey, you need to understand. You can't feel fear, yes, but you can get hurt. And you do so often. How many times have you been to the hospital? People will think I'm a terrible mom. When you are about to do something, stop and think if I would do it. If the answer is no, then don't do it. Mom would try to reason with me like this. And in theory, it sounded cool. <sighs> All right. Maybe her sense of fear is preventing her from doing all that. Like, maybe she, if she's not careful, she could jump off the eighth floor of the Padre Hotel. And it would look like a suicide. If she actually did this on the Padre Hotel, she would definitely die. And she would also be one of the ghosts that are there. I have a Halloween video on it. One of the, it's the video, the ghosts of Big Souls Pass. So you guys know I do have that one on my channel. It's on my Halloween videos, but I'm thinking about doing different ones. I'm not going to do any more ghosts. I did a video on that. But I might do some other ghost-related videos, like Halloween games. But anyway, let's get started. Well, I mean, I could just stop and think if Mom would do it or not. But in practice... I never got to that moment. It was only later that I realized how much I had messed up. I can't even tell you how many times I got home with my jeans ripped, with scrapes and bruises, or far worse. My friends got me really into parkour, and we would go to the park and try these crazy stunts all the time. It was really fun. They would dare each other to do these insane moves, and I was the only one who always accepted it, no matter how crazy. I was a kid doing stuff no other daredevil dare try. So you can imagine how bad it got before long. I actually broke my arm three. All right, guys. Warning. Do not try these stuff. Do not try these the stuff that they do in these videos at home. 
you're gonna get hurt like this girl who actually cannot get scared. Three times. My right ankle once and my left ankle twice. I had to go to the emergency room so many times and I even had to visit a physical therapist twice a week for like a year. It got really bad and my parents were super worried about me. Something else that I could do so easily while my friends really struggled with was asking guys out. <laughs> the girls I hung out with would wait and wait and wait for the man they liked to ask them out. Excuse me while I close this doggy door. Alright. Out on dates. They were too shy or too afraid of rejection to take the first step. I never cared at all if I was told no. I just walked up to a cute guy, freaked at him, and then asked, Hey, would you like to go out with me tonight? Plain and simple. Some guys even looked a bit stunned that I was so straightforward. Honestly, I rarely got told no. Most of them said yes, either because they liked me or because they were impressed by my boldness and wanted to give me a try. It was really fun not to be waiting around for someone to take me out on a fun date out, you know? So at least there was a good sign. These are some nice romance advice. Also, guys, I also deleted my playlist of teen advice because it was getting pretty annoying because it keeps saying it was updated today, even though I never updated it today. But we're going to continue on. I might bring back the playlist, but it's been deleted. But I don't want to, don't know if I will bring it back. I've never experiencing any fear. I was the very first one of my friends to get a date to homecoming. And it was because I just walked up to him, the dreamiest guy at school, and asked him to go with me. It was expected he would ask the head cheerleader to go with him. But he was impressed by my attitude and instead decided to go with me. We ended up dating for an entire year, though it didn't work out in the end. We are still friends, though. He's a pretty cool guy. In college, I met Gavin. The most amazing guy I had ever known. He wasn't only handsome, but so damn smart and witty. He made me laugh every single day. And when he discovered I couldn't experience any fear, Gavin made it his life's mission to try and scare me shitless. He tried so hard, the poor thing, but nothing ever worked. We soon began dating, and he would come up with super creative ways of making me finally experience fear. He'd jump out from dark places and scream at me. He'd hide underneath my bed and wait till I laid down to grab my hand. He even waited in the parking lot, dressed as a big monster, and tried chasing me around. Every single time, I just stared at him in a mix of confusion and amusement. He was always so adorably frustrated. I actually thought it was cute, but he got super frustrated. To me, it was fun, and I liked that he tried so hard. If I have to be honest, I'd love to know what being afraid feels like. I feel kind of lonely sometimes, like I can't understand an important part of human nature. Some people think I'm a freak, and who knows, maybe I am. The problem is, experiencing no fear can always put you in truly dangerous situations. Let me tell you about the time I almost got stabbed because of my problem. You see, I was just walking through the park late one night. Of course, a normal girl might not do something like that but I didn't really feel any kind of fear about it. Suddenly, a guy sitting on a bench called me over. He had ragged clothes and looked... Whoa, dude. There's a serial killer out there. It's a serial killer, so you might want to go away. Dirty and disheveled, but he didn't really seem like a danger to me. So, not feeling that instinctual panic anyone else would in those circumstances... I walked over to him, and then the man pulled a knife on me. Give me all the money you have or I'll cut you, he threatened, expecting me to do as I was told due to fear of being harmed. Instead, I just stared at him blankly and shook my head almost nonchalantly. No way, dude, I'm not giving you my money. I told him, clearly shocking him. The guy stabbed at me, and I jumped out of the way. I realized it was a dangerous situation, so I did try to get away from there, but it wasn't because I was afraid or anything of the sort. Instead of following behind me, the guy just ran the other way as well. He was the one who seemed to be scared. Wow. What a pussy. So this guy is a serial killer. He wants to kill you. This guy obviously isn't a good serial killer. 
some, at least most, most serial killers exist, they basically just try to kill you no matter what. This guy just seems like a big fat pussy. I'm sure that he had never encountered anyone like me before. When I told my boyfriend and my parents about it, they really freaked out. That's exactly what they had been worried about for so long that would happen to me. What if the next time the robber did harm me? Well, thankfully, it's never happened again. And I do try to avoid dark places when I'm alone now. Mom begged me enough that I gave her my word. And I don't like breaking the promises I make. Gavin and I are still together to this day. He is amazing, even if he kind of annoys everyone around us with his constant attempts to scare me. Usually what he achieves is to startle someone else in the process. My mom scolded him so badly one time that he stopped pulling those pranks whenever she was visiting. I really don't mind, though. To me, it's kind of adorable and fun. I'm probably never going to be able to experience any kind of fear, but by now, I've sort of accepted it as a part of me, just like the fact that I'm a brunette and have freckles. So, that's my story. Thanks. All right, guys. But anyways, all right, guys. But anyways, that's all for today. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you guys want me to do another anime inside, bitch, hit the like button in the face and subscribe to my what pack. And if you're new to my channel, bitch, hit that notification bell and, and be sure to subscribe. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye, guys.